Hey guys, Mike with Fabinoki here, and uh, we're working on the kit car chassis that we're going to be using under the new bodies, and uh, that we're going to be building one off carbon fiber bodies for. And uh, so we found some issues. First of all, uh, someone, when we pulled the carpet back, someone had cut an access hole, apparently to access probably the clutch cable um, in the past, and then... Uh, so I'm going to have to cut this out in a square and then patch it and weld it back up. And then also uh, I pulled the master cylinder loose and the, I pulled the pedal assembly loose. <clears throat> I pulled the shifter off. I pulled the emergency brake cable assembly off and then cut the housing off. <clears throat> the difference here. Okay, so a 1977 VW Beetle, which is what this particular chassis is has a 94.5 inch uh, wheelbase center to center on the wheels okay in a 1978 Porsche 911 turbo the wheelbase is five inches shorter it's 89 and a half inches so we're and I want to be dimensionally correct on our bodies and our placement so I'm going to have to cut five inches out of this chassis somewhere and weld it back together and do it with strength and integrity so that it that doesn't uh you know jeopardize the the flex of the chassis itself so um I'm, i've been looking at probably either right here where the um brake assembly was or right here in the actual back bone of the chassis and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and before I cut anything on the chassis, um, I'm going to cut this top plate completely off because that's where the shifter bushing housing is. If you know these Volkswagens, you know that there's a shifter bushing housing for the shift rod itself that goes down through there. And I want to cut that whole piece top plate out so that I don't hurt it whenever I cut the chassis. And then also, so when I shorten it, I can put that shifter back where it goes, actually, in the exact spot I'll scribe the chassis. But also, I want to make sure that when I do shorten the shift shaft to meet with the chassis length at that point, that I can scribe the shaft, say, eight inches or so, longer than the cut point itself on both ends, and then put it back together and match the scribe points and weld it back together as well. So that I don't lose any of the, um, when you're setting it, the shifter will still move in the correct dimensions and the correct throw and play. So, um, anyway, those are just some things that you have to think about when you shorten a pan. Uh, it's really not that big a deal because we're going to be cutting the pans out of this here tomorrow or the next day anyway to put in new pans. So it's really irrelevant. It's fine for me to cut it somewhere and shorten it and then cut these pans to match. We have since got the motor out, the transaxles out, the CV axles are out, uh, the rear shocks are off. I did grind off the, uh, this is where the heater cables, the control cables for the heater would have came out and gone to the heater boxes themselves. It's not gonna have heater boxes. This car, if we put, it's gonna be an off-road car, it's a toy. But if it was to have a heater, I would put like an oil cooler with a blower motor on it or something like that with a flapper valve or something to control which direction or, or whatever it's going at. And then I also cut these right here flush with the sides of the actual bone of the chassis itself. And that is uh, for the um, emergency brake cables that came back here since this is getting ready to be four wheel disc brakes. Uh, it'll no longer have emergency brakes back here. If I wanted to do that, I could install like a line lock, like a race car. Okay, so I've ground the emergency brake cable housings off smooth. Uh, years ago when I built this chassis the first time under the bug, um, I pulled the trailing arms and this actually has bug pack red. You can barely see the red in there. Maybe you can, but uh, red polyurethane bushings already in it. And I put red stoppers on it and I put in the front, it has red 
Um, you can kind of see it, but the bushings on the arms themselves, and then I put a red steering donut on it, and I put a disc brake kit on the front of it, and a stock height that's not lowered. This was a, I live in the country, so there wasn't a point in lowering it. I also put a red shift shaft bushing in it and stuff like that. So um, I had tried to take care of it, and this is a rebuilt motor with like 1,100 miles on it. This is the odd thing. This Now this is a 77 Beetle, standard Beetle, not a not a Super Beetle, and that transaxle, if you notice the housing, the ribs on the housing is really odd. <laughs> I've seen a lot of single side plate transaxles over the years, but none like that. But that's okay. And so, but we're going to go through the tranny. We're going to rebuild the half shafts that are laying over there next to the motor. And then uh, we're going to shorten the pan total and make the wheel base work out for the Porsche body. And then we're going to put the new pans in it chassis black everything you're going to build a rotisserie for this here in the next few days i'm going to get the front beam off so i can start rebuilding it and uh, we'll make videos of rebuilding the beam uh cross drilling the rotors because i'm going to go porsche five bolt instead of the vw four bolt um the vw is four on 130 and the porsche is five on 130 so you just relocate the holes and then i have rear disc brake kit in the shop and I'm going to install that and drill it. It's also a four bolt, so I'm going to drill it for a five bolt. And then uh, we're going to chassis black the chassis with uh, uh, rust oleum black, like three coats on the top and three coats on the bottom. And then start putting everything back together. We'll pull the A arms, the rear A arms off, the banana arms, whatever you want to call them, and uh, we'll uh, wire wheel those down and paint them cast coat gray or something paint the front beam cast coat gray or something and so it offsets the colors and whatever put all new wheel bearings new ball joints new tie rods new shocks front and rear um rebuild the steering gearbox rebuild the transaxle and then when it's all done that's not the motor that's going to go in it, or sorry the engine that's going to go in it uh it's going to have a uh a, a 2332 or a 2054 i haven't decided which i have a 2054 that's brand new or a 2332 that i could build so either way we'll decide but uh anyway this is where we're at and uh what we've been doing today is just i've been cleaning off this pan getting the stuff unbolted off of it and everything cutting it off getting it ready so in the next few days it's going to continue i got to get the uh, front beam off and the rear banana arms off or the rear trading arms off. And then I'm going to build the rotisserie. Uh, so I'll take some videos here and there. It won't be, you won't get a video of all of it happening, but you'll get a video of some of it happening. Uh, I'll show the video of the rotisserie that we put together for it. And then um, just a simple home-built rotisserie. It's nothing, oh, nothing like that. And uh, so, but anyway, that's that's what we're going. The and it's going to go inside the shop, and we're going to start working it over and getting it ready. And then uh, the uh, 3D scan molds. I got the um, uh, proofs in yesterday, and they look good. So uh, we're going to get that rolling so that we can start building a buck to build our own bodies. We're going to build our own carbon fiber bodies. So, but. Uh, Lots of work to do, lots of learning curves to learn. Um, my better half's been learning CNC and that's been a challenge for her. I'm gonna learn something that's a challenge for me. So, hey, here we go. Appreciate it, guys. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe.